Hey guys, it's Intricate from AmigaLove.com and I want to share with you today a really cool retro hardware project I've been working on for a while now to get working where I've successfully connected an Amiga 1000 to an iOmega zip drive. Remember those things? Um, it actually sees the iOmega zip drive as a full-fledged SCSI hard drive and on top of that, uh, through the help of some online friends, um, found a way to pass control of the workbench floppy when you boot over to the zip which has a fully installed version of workbench on it and so it basically loads it feels like even though you're using a floppy disk at the very beginning it feels like you're just auto booting right into a, a workbench like you would on a normal amiga very very cool i can't wait to show you this first let me show you the parts that you're going to need to do it yourself if you want to give it a try okay guys so here are the th here are the main ingredients that you're going to need to put together this really awesome recipe, okay? The first and most important, and honestly, sadly, the hardest to deal with, because there aren't exactly a, a billion of these sitting out there, but it's the Microbotics Star Drive. That's what this is right here. It's an expansion device that went into your expansion port on the side of your Amiga 1000, same side as where your mouse plugs in. And you could stack these, right? You could do multiples of these, but basically the, the, the bare bones minimum thing that this provided was expansion RAM, fast RAM. You could get a, a one megabyte, you could get two megabyte. This happens to be a two megabyte board. You can kind of see it in there. Um, but beyond just the star board, they, Microbotics back in 1986, created expansion modules that you could press into the RAM board. So it was ready for expansion on the inside of this already on day one. And basically you could get an additional component which was called the Star Drive. <laughs> you could tell somebody was a Star Trek fan, right? Back in the day, the Star Board, the Star Drive, the Star Drive, engage number one. <laughs> the Star Drive um, was a SCSI controller and it allowed you to uh, attach a uh, a SCSI ribbon cable on the inside and pass it to an external port. Uh, I actually have mine attached. I, this is my second, I have two of these. This is the two meg, I have the one meg attached. Um, but basically, you can see there's a place here for the ribbon to come out. And uh, based on how the port's designed, it has those two little screws that you can mount it to the back of this if you had the star drive um, extra component. Right, so you're looking for a starboard, and if you have a starboard, you're looking for a star drive. A lot of times these days, they're going to be inside here already. You're not going to find star drives necessarily loose floating around. It's possible, but most of the time, you're going to find them already in there, and you kind of have to buy it as an all in one because nobody wants to take these apart. And I don't blame them for that. And also, guys, a lot of times when folks are selling these today, at least. My experience has been they don't even know the star drive's in there. And just from looking at the back, you won't know. Because it, it's this little thing on the inside. Now, the only way to know is if there's a star drive is if you were to ask, ask the owner to, can you just pop those two screws and pop this open? Bloop, flip that up. The way you'll know instantly is if you see a AA battery sitting in there or a place that would... The, the prongs that would hold a AA battery in there because the star drive also provided a real-time clock called the star clock. Not exactly the most original name, lots of stars here. Carl Sagan would have been proud. Um, all right, so that's the main piece that you're looking for, the starboard with the star drive by Microbotics, okay? And the, I'll mention this briefly, but the star clock Mine actually works, but I've disabled it because, at least for now, um, it had the, the drivers that were written for it only, only support up to, if I remember correctly, the year 2010. Once you go, uh, if you try and do 2018, it, it kind of crashes the software and it confuses your Amiga and it'll reset it down to 1978 even though the clock is technically functional. It will save the day and the month but it, it doesn't understand anything beyond the year 2010. And so what I had been doing was setting my... Um, I've been setting the, the clock to the year 2009 
because I still could see the day and I could still see the month. And that's great if you're creating files, fantastic. Not that you're not living in the 70s, <laughs> which is awful when that's the, the case. And is usually the case on an Amiga 1000 these days, right? So anyway, um, the way you can tell real quickly if you have a star drive in there um, is if you see the place for a AA battery, okay? Now, the next piece of the puzzle, much easier to find, because they made millions of these things, is the iOmega zip drive. And it's important, you're looking for the SCSI drive, the Zip 100, right? Um, very, very cool device, and really cool for Amiga folk like us, because not only can it go this way, but it can also go that way, which is, in my opinion, the preferred direction if you're an Amiga 1000 owner. You wanna go vertical, you don't wanna go horizontal. That's what the 500 does, and that's that's the design of the 500. So you you could do this with the 500 if you wanted to, absolutely. Um, in theory, if you had the proper SCSI connector for it, and you could make it look like it belonged with the 500 if you went that way. But if you're in the 1000 world, you want to go this way, right? Okay. Now, in terms of the I Omega, or is it I Amiga? Oh. The iOmega Zip 100, right? Um, you're gonna find two switches on the back. And I'm only saying this, guys, because, I mean, it was over 20 years since I played with one of these things, so I had to kind of retrain my brain as to what I was looking at. But there's a termination switch, and then there's a unit number switch. And if you're only gonna use one of these, and there's no other hard drives, this is the only one, termination is on. If that's set to off, you're not going to get very far with this project. Turn that to on. Um, and then in my case, I set my unit number to five. And you need to know that later on as you update some of the software, which we're going to talk about. And if you happen to have your original um, iOmega Zip SCSI cable, that's perfect because it's going to go right into here and it's going to go right into the back of the port, most likely, that you have already on the back of your uh, starboard, assuming you have that. Okay, that's the second main piece. Very, very cool. And then the final piece, I mean, all of these pieces are critical, but the final piece is some exceptional software um, that was, basically it's Workbench that's been slightly modified by Blake Patterson. Blake Patterson is an extremely talented photographer um, if you uh, happen to be on Flickr these days, go check him out, hunt him down. His work is very, very cool. Um, whether it's from retro standpoint or gaming standpoint or anything, anything he points his camera at, it looks fantastic. Um, and he's had an Amiga 1000 since back in the day, and he made his boot up the way that I'm going to just, uh, demo here in just a moment, where you're handing over control from the floppy boot over to the zip boot which is really, really awesome. And basically there's a customized startup sequence on here that is critical for all of this to work. There's also a mount list in here, which I have to give huge props to Tim Kovacs for understanding and figuring out what the specific geometry of the zip drive's disc is. Without the geometry, this project would not have gotten anywhere. And he was able to hunt that down and plug it in and share that with me. And so huge props to both Blake and Tim for the work that they did, whether it was a million years ago or whether it was just a, a few weeks ago in getting this to work because that it wouldn't work without those two gentlemen's help in the project. So thanks again. So those are the basic pieces that you're gonna need, um, obviously in addition to the SCSI cable, right? Um, and the Amiga 1000. So. Let's watch this in progress. Put the specialized workbench floppy in there. And what you're gonna notice in a little bit is that it's gonna reach out and seek that iOmega zip drive. It's gonna, it's gonna flicker for just a moment, it's busy light. Then it's gonna pass control over to the zip and the zip is gonna actually start to load workbench for us much faster than the floppy would. So let's wait. There it goes. Now she's singing to us, starting to load workbench for us. Floppy decides, okay, I'll be quiet now. 
At the very end, you'll start to hear this grind again because it's going to start getting ready to mount itself on our desktop here, on the workbench desktop. But the truth is, and this was this was like a almost a religious experience for me, I was able to pop the workbench disc out, but I still got workbench right here inside of my hard drive. That's a very, very cool icon, originally designed by Tim Kovac. I modified it for, uh, for my own personal tastes just a little bit, but thanks again to Tim for his icon on that as well. So all of my workbench is in here, as well as my games that I've been playing recently. And you can see I still have a lot of free space to go because Guys, 100 megabytes on these machines is is massive. It's 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 almost obscenely large for what folks were used to back in 1986, 1987. It's plenty. And if you need more, pop as many disks in there as you want, right? Just go format a few more. So, uh, I am going to attach an article to this that gives specific, very clear instructions on how to do this yourself. If you happen to source all of the hardware, that's going to be one of the trickiest parts of this whole thing, is trying to find and source that star drive. But man, once you do, and once you get these, uh, once you get this software and this flow in your brain to work, it is really cool. Now. There are a couple of caveats to this, which I'll outline here in just a second. Okay guys, so that's how you hook up an iOmega Zip 100 SCSI drive to your Amiga 1000 using the Microbotic Starboard and Star Drive. Awesome, awesome project. I have to say it was a complete thrill when I finally got it to work. Um, and I hope I, I couldn't wait to share this with the community because I think it's a fairly unique and interesting project. I hope some of you out there are inspired to uh, give it a shot yourself if you happen to be lucky enough to have some of this hardware um, or at least inspire a few of you to start hunting for it. It does exist. It is out there. Um, a, couple of, a couple of things worth noting uh, from a technical perspective and I'm not an engineer so you'll have to forgive me. I'm speaking in layman's terms because that's where I'm at. I'm a layman. <laughs> um, Every now and then it'll guru for no reason. At least no reason that you can really understand. It always seems to be, at least in my case, and I've asked him and he said that he's, he's had a similar experience where you might be mucking around in Workbench um, and moving some things around, going through different uh, folders and whatnot, and it'll just suddenly guru. No rhyme or reason to it. If I'm in the middle of a game or some, some uh, software like Deluxe Paint, I, I've not actually had that uh, had any issues, thankfully. Um, but every so often, I have seen this behavior, and so it does exist. And I think it's actually just the nature of the Microbotics uh, drivers. They were written back in 1986, uh, pretty quickly to rush to market this really cool uh, device for the use of mechanical spinning hard drives back in the day when they were typically 20 megabytes, and. The drivers just aren't amazing. Like I said before, the, the star clock itself was only written to go as far as 2010. They never, no one in their right mind back then, and I think that rightfully so, could conceive the thought that these machines would still be in use in 2018. Um, so they just didn't even bother trying to expand the calendar uh, any, any further than 2010. Some of the drivers for the for talking back and forth and from a SCSI connector standpoint, those seem to be every now and then just a little bit unstable, and you will see a little bit of an issue there. I have uh, for sure. Also, it's worth noting that um, these old starboards, these connectors, um, you know, these are old. They've been around a really long time. Um, if you're really talented and uh, industrious, you could probably put a new connector on yours. If you're good like that with soldering, I would recommend it because at least with this one, for me personally, the, the two mags, um, this has probably been pulled off countless times, hundreds if not thousands. And just like old school Nintendo cartridges or Sega, whatever, after a while these start to wear out and they don't quite grab the expansion pins the same way. And I've cleaned my pins, I've I've done all the same things that I used to do with cartridges. Um, 
That's not what it is. It's, it's these ports. These can wear out. That's actually why I'm using my 1 meg instead of the 2 meg expansion. Why? Because the 1 meg actually works. I never have to worry about the connector. The 2 meg, it's a little flaky. And that's just because this thing's been put through a lot of use over the past 30 years. So, in any case, I hope you've enjoyed this project of mine uh, as much as I enjoyed finally getting it to work. Um, if you like this kind of stuff and you're still sticking around, you're still listening to me talk, please thank that video. Hit that little like button or thumbs down, whatever if you thought it sucked. Uh, I can take it. I'm a big boy. Um, drop me some comments down below. And if you do want to try and uh, give this a go yourself, there is going to be an article in the description area down below uh, with, uh, with a detailed instruction list of how to go about this process with also downloads uh, to the software that you're going to need. Um, or at least code snippets that you'll need to modify your own uh, workbench with the proper zip geometry and stuff like that. So until next time, guys, this is Intricate from Amiga Love. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy.